Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, just to start off with, uh, my name is David Tolley. My co-presenter is going to be Diva Kova Kovalenko down there. Uh, you see Shutterfly and Groupon up here. When I first came up with this idea, I was actually working at Groupon, but since then I've defected to Shutterfly. So uh, you know, that's why you'll see both of those icons up there. Um, just to give you a little background about the two of us, um, Dima's in DevOps and Automation Engineer. He's been an engineer since 2003. Uh, you can reach him at dima at groupon.com if you have any uh, uh, questions for him. Um, me, I work for Shutterfly. Uh, a lot of people, when they think about Shutterfly, they don't necessarily think about really high technology, really cool stuff. Mostly they think about photo books and you know, printed pictures. Um, but what they don't realize is that we're actually one of the leaders in big data. We actually have over 50 petabytes of uh, images in all of our data servers. Uh, so we do a lot of image processing, image recognition, uh, big data storage. And um, we're also the largest uh, social-based uh, personal publishing company. And what that means is you can take your pictures and you can print them on a blanket if you really want to. Some people do this, some people don't, but it's kind of weird. But if you want to do that, you can do that. I want to start off with a, a little bit of a, a Selenium timeline. Uh, this is basically based all on my experience, you know, all the uh, trials and tribulations that I ran into. So, of course, we, we all start off writing Selenium tests, right? Um, you create the test, you know, in Java, PHP, whatever you want to uh, create the tests in. You run them, you get failures. Um, you do a get blame for that, for the code that actually failed that Selenium test. And um, you show it to the developer, and of course, the developer says, you know, this works for me, it works on my box, you know, without fail. If you haven't ran into that, well, you know, congratulations. Um, so, you know, you know, you get this failure, and you're like, okay, well, what's the next step can I do? What can I do to prove that this was a real failure? So then you start printing out stack traces. So on the next failure, you have this really nice stack trace, you present it to a developer, and you have a little bit of data to back it up, and then they're like, eh, okay, I, I, I see it's a failure, but this is only failing on CI, it's only failing on Jenkins. You know, if I run this on my box, it, it, it's still working. So basically, this is like a Jenkins problem, right? So then you're like, okay, you know, what's the next step that I can do? So then you start taking screenshots of you know, whenever a test failures, uh, fails. You know, so now you have a screenshot, you have a stack trace, you have you know, a huge mountain of data that you can present to your developers to show them that this is a real failure. And then finally they're like, okay, you know, this makes sense. You know, I see a screenshot, I see a failure. You know, this is cool, you know, this is something I can work with. But of course, developers are never happy because they had to look at the screenshots they have to find them in like the Jenkins archive. Then they have to go to the console, see the, see the, uh, the stack traces. You know, it's not combined, so there's some work that they have to do. Um, you know, so what did I learn about this? You know, you know, data is awesome, but if it's not really actionable, if, if you have a lot of data, but you don't present it in a really nice, useful way, that's really easy for a developer to look at you know, in one screen and have all the information available on that one screen, you know, they're, they're not gonna use it to the best of their abilities. Um, so to give you a real world example of you know, why, why this doesn't work out, you know, if I'm gonna give you a stack trace, right? And then on the next screen, I'm gonna give you a screenshot. And you'll see when they're disjointed and, and not combined together, it's kinda hard to get the, the full sense of the picture. So uh, here's my stack trace. Giant, observed, uh, 15 foot tall by 20 foot wide, a big brown stuffed uh, cat crammed into a UFO. It's hanging from the fourth floor ceiling of Groupon's headquarters. He has a big tongue hanging out of its mouth, and you're, you're thinking like, you know what the crap, that, that can't be real. So this is my screenshot. <laughs> now if you saw this, you might think it was some weird sci-fi thing, you know, you know you, this has to be like some parody, right? Then if you look on the, the left of this picture up here, you actually see a woman walking behind it. So that kind of gives you the scale of you know, how big this thing really is. So then if you put it together, if you put that screenshot together along with uh, the stack trace, it starts to actually make sense. And I really am, am sad to say that if you go to Groupon headquarters, if you go to the fourth floor, you'll see a giant 20-foot stuffed cat hanging from the ceiling that's stuffed inside of a UFO. And here you kind of get the full picture, right? You have the stack trace, you have the, uh, the picture, you have all the data you need to, uh, to realize that this is a real thing. But how does this really play in, into Selenium and you know, specifically Jenkins and you know, your CI environments? And it, it kind of looks like this. So whenever you run um, your Selenium test on Jenkins, say you're using the, uh, the JUnit framework, right? 
uh, you have your tests, you have your test failures. Uh, when, hopefully whenever a test failures, you'll take a screenshot and you'll name that screenshot you know, something to do with the test, right? The, the same test name. And then uh, we created a Jenkins plugin that'll um, look for the, the artifacts of that Jenkins run, um, look for the corresponding tests that failed. You'll try to find a screenshot with that test failure and it'll all combine it all onto one page. So that's pretty cool, right? So now the developers can see the, the, the test that failed, the name of the test that failed, they see the screenshot, they see the stack trace all in one nice place. So the developers see this, they can act on it, you know, they commit code to fix it, and then hopefully the next time it runs, um, you know, it, it's all taken care of for them. Uh, so, you know, while I was doing this work, I, I kind of discovered a couple of uh, different things. You know, number one, Selenium is, al is already going through your code base, right? You have all these Selenium tests, they're calling through your website, and then also Selenium can take screenshots of, you know, all these different steps. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, only on failures. Um, it can be, you know, while the app is, is running, right? Anytime you hit an endpoint, you can take a screenshot and name it, you know, that particular endpoint. And, you know, you kind of have an, an image repository of uh, your current uh, application. And so, um, so what I decided to do was create a, a, a screenshot comparison plugin in, in Jenkins. Um, you know, Selenium is really great for functional testing, right? It'll go through your page, it'll click on links, it'll show you, you know, populated data and, and forms. Um, you know, it'll tell you if you click a button if it's not actually going to the right page. It does a lot of cool things for functional testing. Um, but the problem with that is, you know, the CSS color could be off, you know, the boundaries of uh, a border can be off. It could be the, the, wrong, um, the wrong implementation of, you know, whatever your, your UX designer uh, wanted it to be, you know, pixels can be off, you know, a border can be, you know, two pixels uh, wide instead of one pixel wide. You know, small nitpicky things that, you know, even if you have uh, an army of manual testers, you know, they're not necessarily go going to find all these uh, different problems for you. But if you use a, a computer to do uh, the image comparison for you, they're going to find these problems. Um, because, you know, when a manual tester is looking at all these pages, they're looking at them day in and day out. Um, they get used to things, you know, they start overlooking things. You know, no matter how good that manual tester is, they're, they're going to overlook these, um, overlook these problems from time to time. So, in my experience, the biggest number of bugs in a, a typical backlog all have to do with cosmetics. Um, especially if your UX designer is, you know, tightly integrated with your uh, Scrum process. You know, they're going to tell you this pixel is off by, you know, or, or this border is off by one or two pixels. You know, this font's, you know, the right, not the right type font, where, you know, an end user might not notice it, but you know, UX people are definitely going to notice it. Um, not only are, are they the, uh, typically the largest um, number of bugs in your backlog, but they're also really hard to find. Uh, we have a lot of automated tests, right? We have unit tests, we have functional tests, integration tests that test the actual code, um, but typically there, there's not a lot of automated ways to, to text that, test the actual UI itself, or, or the UX itself, how it actually looks. Um, and again, manual testing, you know, especially in today's world where, you know, we're releasing multiple times per day, you know, on every single commit uh, sometimes, you know, or at least, you know, two or three times a day, it's really hard to fit in this whole traditional manual process. Um, traditionally, you, you know, in the waterfall method, you know, you have your code, you have, you know, a couple months to, to release your code. So you have, you know, an army of manual testers going through the code, you know, incrementally. Um, you have a lot of that time to find these, um, these UI bugs. But again, with continuous delivery and, and the CI infrastructure, it's almost impossible to do that nowadays. Um, so first of all, before I, I show you this, you know, there are a couple of, of drawbacks to at least my implementation. You know, when I started this, basically what I wanted was, you know, a really easy, simple, fast way to compare screenshots and, and get some kind of feeling that, you know, the overall UX feel of um, of our application isn't completely messed up, right? Um, and again, functional tests will, you know, make sure it can click on links and stuff, but if the colors are wrong, you know, a Selenium test really isn't going to find that. Um, so, um, you know, a couple of the drawbacks of, of this current implementation, and it's a work in progress, but uh, currently we only run it on release candidates. Um, we, we, you know, we have a CI system set up where on every single uh, commit our, our full CI system runs. So we have our unit test, integration test, Selenium test. They all run on every single commit that a developer has. 
you know, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to get you know, all those test results back. Um, but this process does take a while. Um, at least with you know, my image conversion algorithm. You know, I, I'm not an image expert, so sorry about that. Um, you know, it, it definitely takes a, a longer process than you know, a unit test. Um, so there's a couple of caveats with that, right? Um, first of all is you need to figure out how do you want to you know, continually update your image repo. So the way this works is, um, again, this is working on Jenkins, right? So on uh, the, the user stores on Jenkins, there's this kind of master image repository uh, where you have a set of known good images. Um, so we had to figure out a way to, to automatically update that image repository. Um, the second thing is, since you know, basically what my comparison does is, is a pixel by pix pixel comparison, um, so all our build environments have to run you know, in the same type of screen resolution, you know, operating system, things like that. You know, just because you're using um, Firefox on Windows, it's going to look different if you're using Firefox on, um, on Linux. Even though it's the same uh, browser, it just looks a little bit different. Uh, and again, this isn't really a, a fast process. Um, it's a very useful process, in, in my opinion, in, our, in my experience, um, but it definitely is not as fast as it could be. Um, but if you take those things into consideration, it's actually a pretty awesome tool. Um, so let me give you a little breakdown of you know, the different steps to, to kind of get this going. Um, first of all, um, you need to automatically you know, create this image archive for yourself. Um, if you're going through and taking screenshots of pages by yourself, you know, that, that's going to take way too long. Um, but again, Selenium you know, naturally uh, crawls through your websites. And since you can take screenshots of you know, wherever you are in your particular, um, in your particular application, um, all you have to do is name those particular endpoints. You know, always have it, you know, give it the same name, you know, have it go to a PNG file or something like that, and Selenium will take that screenshot for you. Um, and then in Jenkins, you can um, archive all those uh, images that were created there in this run, um, store them as artifacts. And then you can just SCP the artifacts from the build directory you know, to your master slave. Um, so, so that's one way that you can you know, create your, um, your image repository from, from scratch. And then, um, then the uh, actual um, uh, job that runs on Jenkins, um, you have to set that up as well. Um, so just like your crawler job that you use to create your image repository, um, except this job is, is tied to your, your release pipeline. Um, so at Shutterfly, what we do is, you know, we have our CI system for our, our normal branches, then um, once a week, um, you know, we'll, we'll cut a release branch, and then we'll, you know, run some more exhaustive tests on that. Uh, whenever we cut that release branch, this is, um, this is where we'll run this system. Um, so it takes the same picture of the endpoints as you know, your Selenium crawler does, and names it the same way. Um, and, um, and for that job, what you actually have to do is you just configure uh, the screenshot comparison plugin. Um, you give it the location of where your image archive is, and then you'll give it the location of where the current run uh, images are stored. So then the actual screenshot uh, comparison um, this is kind of where, where the magic happens, right? Um, so it goes to your image repo, it gets a list of all those images. It, it goes to your current build directory and, and it gets all those artifacts as well. Uh, it compares the, uh, it, it creates a list of, of those images. Um, it, it compares you know, the images from the repo to the, uh, the working directory. Um, and it prints out a, a percent difference of each uh, image. And it also gives you a, a nice little UI. Um, it kind of looks like this, right? Um, so here, I'm going to give you a live example in a second. But th these are going to be the two images that I compare. Uh, you know, they're slightly different. M most of it's the same, but you can see one has my pictures or my Shutterfly highlighted. One has my pictures highlighted. You know, kind of the footer section is all the same, but the text in the middle and then the color um, of the navigation section is a little bit different. In Jenkins, this is kind of what it looks like. Um, so after a build runs, there's an endpoint you can reach called compare, um, and it'll show you, you know, what images it compared, you know, and what the percent different pixels are, and it'll give you a link um, to go to those individual pictures. So, you know, 
if the summary is a little bit too small for you to actually figure out what's going on, uh, you can click on the link and it'll, it'll take you to those actual pictures. So, so it's pretty cool. Uh, let me give you kind of a live demo of, of what this looks like. <laughs> Oops. There you go. Bam, bam. Uh, there you go. You don't care about that, do you? No. Let's see. Um, cool. So let me just, just run this real quick. Um, it's basically just doing one Selenium test. You know, you don't have to, it doesn't take very long. It only takes a few seconds to complete. So bam. So we have this uh, job that completed. And again, we're, we're going to go to this endpoint um, of the plugin that I created. And here you go. Well, it's kind of small for this resolution, but. So, um, so this is the kind of, Jenkins has this thing called actions where you can add an action to a build. It gives you an endpoint URL that you can hit, and you can put all your logic in there, right? So this uh, shows dissimilar screenshots. Um, so here's the, uh, the repo image, um, my, my shutterfly home.png. Again, if you want to click on it to get a bigger picture, um, you, can, you can see the full size image. Um, normally, this is right next to each other, but since the projector is really low resolution, it, it's you know going to the bottom. Um, here's the uh, the workspace image, my Shutterfly, uh, the PNG. Um, so it, it shows you what uh, picture was actually taken or screenshot was actually taken on the current run. And then below that, it actually tells you um, how many pixels were actually percent of pixels were actually different. Uh, the way that we generate uh, percent of pixels was you know, how many pixels are, pixels are in the total image, um, or how many pixels were different divided by the amount of uh, pixels that are in the total image. Um, and you get this for every single run um, that you, you know, have this job set up to. Um, and it's, it's a useful tool, right? I mean, a lot of the times you'll, you won't have dissimilar, dissimilar images. Um, some things that you need to take into account of this is if you don't use pre-generated fixtures for your tests, uh, you could have things like time, uh, time stamps and, and date stamps um, that show up as you know percent difference differences of pixels. Um, I'm actually working on being able to, t to selectively um, uh, screen capture uh, different elements so I can exclude you know date stamp, uh, date stamps or or text boxes you know however I want to do it. Um, but for right now, it, it, it basically takes those images, breaks them down to pixels, and compares pixel by pixel. Not the most useful or, or efficient algorithm, um, but I was able to do it in less than a day, and it, 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 re it really does save us a lot of time, right? Uh, it's actually caught a, a few bugs for us, and um, again, it, it, if you're in this you know, uh, lean, agile environment, typically you know, companies even like, like Facebook, they don't have dedicated QA engineers, right? Uh, you know, with group uh, with Shutterfly, we actually have a completely separate release QA team, so we do have a couple of manual testers. Um, but you know that that's kind of the exception to the rule. Oh, especially if you're a small startup, you, you're not going to have time to hire manual testers. So, you know, a little thing like this, um, automating um, the actual look and feel of your page, uh, is, can save you a lot of time. Again, it's not perfect; it's a work in progress, but it, it is something. Let me go back to the PowerPoint now. So, so what actually doesn't compare? Um, again, it's pixel by pixel, so it's it's comparing colors, positioning, text, uh, sizes, and again, for better or worse, it, it's comparing everything about the images. Again, you know, there's downfalls on, on that because you know it's going to compare, um, uh, you know, timestamps and things that you you don't normally care about. Um, I do have a, a built-in mechanism where you can uh, uh, set a threshold where if it's um, below a certain number of pi pixels that are different, uh, it won't actually fail the build. Uh, so you do have some kind of leeway there. Um, but beyond that, um, you know, it compares everything, right? Um, so, so this is kind of where I, I'm going to turn it over to, to Dima. Um, the, the main problem with this is it, it's CI independent. It, it's basically based on Jenkins. It's, it's a Jenkins plugin. So we use um, Selenium to, to create the screenshots for us, but the actual comparison right now is tied into Jenkins, and you know, not everyone uses Jenkins. Um, you know, a lot of people do, but you know, a lot of people are using, um, you know, Travis CI or Bamboo or you know, something, something else. 
Um, so we want to make this CI independent. Um, and Deem is actually working on an extension to the, uh, the Selenium grid. And I want to tie this comparison into the Selenium grid itself. And um, you know, this is kind of where I'll, I'll let him take over. All right. Is this one working? Really quickly set this up. Can I save the mic from you? All right, so is one of them working? I'm not sure. Okay, uh, uh, let's go fast because we only have a little bit of time left. So the, uh, the, the, the presentation I gave a little bit earlier today was about this thing called uh, we, we're working on to help maintain the um, uh, the boxes, the, the nodes on the grid themselves, uh, we call it Selenium Extra Grid. And one of the things that it allows you to do is to right now take a screenshot of the machine in the current state. And if you hit the machine with the endpoint of screenshot, it gives you a nice little base 64 encoding of that actual screenshot. And what it does is uh, when you actually look at it, uh, Hello. Malfunction. So uh, when you actually look at it, it um, gives you a little bit, oh, okay, so it's starting to get recursively down. That's why I was confused. Uh, <laughs> when you look at it, though, it um, gives you the whole thing. So David and I had a bit of a meeting of the minds. And if we're taking screenshots right away, why don't we um, able to take uh, chunks of the screenshots and compare them? And, farm the actual comparison off to the, the grid helper to actually, the test can send a screenshot of what's going on and say, can you compare these two? And based on that, the test either passes or fails. And so one of the things that we are working on, whoa, this resolution is quite horrific. Uh, I cannot even reach my tool anymore. Give me one second, I apologize. Um, split the, uh, the image up into little sections. And on the fly, we can say, I want to only compare the first two rows of the image. I don't care about the rest of the stuff, but I want to make sure that the headers are lining up correctly, or just one button is lining up. And th that way, you don't have to uh, compare the whole image pixel to pixel. And uh, we are starting to work on this today, so we're really excited about that. Um, and like I said, it's another plug for the Selenium Grid Extras plugin. So, Anybody else has great ideas? I already had some people suggest a couple of cool image comparison tools. It's instead of doing a pixel by pixel comparison or writing our own, um, what do you call it, uh, comparison stuff. So, hey, uh, that's about it. Uh, the, the only thing, uh, other thing I wanted to mention, which I thought was pretty cool, and um, was that you can um, sometimes record a video on your Windows box, which is always a pain in the ass. And uh, when the test passes or fails, you can um, archive it as an artifact. So uh, when we run a Jasmine test on Windows, I wrote a little script. Here's the gist for it. But that will launch your VLC and record a very, very, very compressed version of the video. We're talking about eight minute run is 1.1 megabytes. Very small, but still readable. So kind of bringing all these technologies together to help you out see what went wrong at the point it went wrong, because otherwise you can never figure out what went wrong in Jenkins, and you can never get access to that stuff. So uh, I'm really hoping that the, that will help a lot of people out. Um, I think we'll take questions now. Yes, sir. Seems like you get a performance boost out of maybe doing an asynchronous comparison of these images, farm it out to some other process, and not even block the test for results on that. Abs absolutely, and this is why we can, um, uh, this is one of the things for the, uh, the grid extra. You just farm it out and say, hey, work on this. And then at some point at the end of the test run, you can say, I gave you five images to uh, look through. What are their statuses? And then base your exit code on that. Sign that with me. Yes, awesome. We got a we got a committer. Yes, sir. So, so two quick questions. One, are you highlighting where on the image the pixels are different? Because I'm thinking when you're looking at a game, we'll highlight what the differences are. Like an alpha overlay, anything like that is really helpful. The second is, would you consider also getting a DOM screen and being able to do a diff? So you can highlight because the DOM will tell you what part of the pixels is being rendered in this thing. You can actually do a diff overlay and say, here's what the DOM is different. 
No, yeah, for sure. That, that would definitely be a, a, a great feature. Uh, currently, it, it doesn't have that. Um, I'm actually working on uh, displaying a third image next to the, the two, the, uh, the image repo and then the, the current image. Um, that'll actually be the difference um, of pixels between the two. Um, so it's kind of a different way of doing the, uh, the highlighting of the different areas. Yeah. Um, but but still pretty useful, but highlighting definitely is, um, again, I did the most simplest thing possible to, to get a really nice, fast result that's still useful. Uh, and it's definitely a work in progress, and it's definitely something that you know we, we want to improve upon and, and add more features to. Yeah. And by the way, this is awesome because like everybody is kind of siloed on in their own little company, and we are having these everyday struggles. And I'm loving the fact that everybody kind of came together and was like, "Let's make this tool. Let's make this thing that everybody so desperately wants." And like everybody's throwing ideas. It's like, yes, I'd never thought about doing the highlighting. That's a great idea. And the DOM tree. Awesome idea. So it's like we can actually try to build something that uh, will make the rest of our lives much, much happier on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, any more questions? Are we out of time? Uh, go right here. Five minutes. Five minutes, by the way. Nine. Nine. Oh. What's the process for when there's a, when there's a change to your images that is on purpose? How do, can you update the... Yeah, so um, on the... Uh, on the, uh, the Jenkins screenshot itself, um, or the Jenkins uh, action page itself, there's, uh, there's two buttons that I'm working on right now, basically, um, where there'll be an accept uh, button between both, uh, both images. And if you accept the, uh, the one that's in the current working directly, uh, directory, it'll actually just SCP that image uh, into your master directory and override the existing file, so it's really easy. By the way, are you working on releasing this thing yes. open source? So that would be probably Shutterfly blog at some point yeah. in the future. Yeah. The tricky thing about this is I, I started writing this at Groupon and now I'm at Shutterfly, so it's got to figure out there, all the... There's, there's some stuff going on there. So uh, Got to figure out all the legalese. I don't know, but uh, yes, it should be. Stuff that I don't care about, but, you know, lawyers care about. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Yes, sir. The gr uh, so, sorry? Well, in the in the page objects, well, you're 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 comparing the actual content of the page uh, and making sure that it's there. And if the button is there and is clickable, you it's 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 a passing test. However, if the button is just looks horrible because the styles did not get applied, you you don't really. It's not that easy to pick that up that all the CSS files loaded properly, right? Uh, or that the JavaScript uh, changed the the look and feel of the button on the fly. But uh, this way, you are actually comparing the uh, actual what is visible to the human. It's a little bit more closer to um, human testing instead of uh, just low-level functional testing. And, and I mean, if if you start, you know, getting um, <coughs> element, you know, attributes, you know, like give me the color, give me the font size, give me the border, you know, of every single element in your page, it, it, it's going to drastically increase your uh, Selenium runs. Um, but like, like Marcus said, uh, if we're able to farm these out to some you know, a asynchronous uh, process using the Selenium grid, um, you know, those can run in the background or on the side and then you know, send those results back. So it won't actually tie up uh, your Selenium runs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we can do with it. Um, you know, you can definitely uh, send us an email, or uh, I'll actually start creating a, uh, or, or a, a public Git repository. Send us a diff. Yes. You, you, you can do the code for us. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. At the moment, what we're doing at Groupon is that every time um, a step in a test fails, uh, before we fail out of that test, we take an instant screenshot right away. And that one of the things that David did was, uh, was able to find a way to integrate those screenshots into the Jenkins uh, display of like, here's the test failure, and here's the thing embedded. Uh, but 
you know, taking screenshots from compressed video might not give you the best resolution. Yeah, it's, it's going to be quite awful. You might miss a lot of details. Because um, like you said, he's using a, a VLC uh, compression algorithm that takes eight, to minute, eight minutes down to like one megabyte. Yeah, and it's, it's enough to find things to, that are... Um, we, we would have issues where a test would randomly stop failing but uh, couldn't figure it out. And when you watch the video, you realize that the, 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 the test itself navigated away from the test page onto Google. And so now it cannot find any of the page objects. But the URL was not there. And so it was just a little bit of a confusion. So taking the videos, even though they're low resolution, is still helpful than no videos whatsoever. Yep. Anybody else? We're done. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Good job, David. Good job.